I welcome you all to this lecture in the course Introduction to Paninian Grammar. We are studying the concepts of Karaka, the definitions given in the Paninian grammatical tradition of this very important concept of Karaka. We have studied these technical terms as defined in the Saudhnya Sutras in the Ashtadhyayi. Overall, the Karaka terms can be also represented in this particular format. In this lecture, we shall study this way of explaining the definitions of Karakas which were provided in the Ashtadhyayi which we studied in the previous lecture. These explanations are provided by scholars who lived in the post 18th century era. Mainly there are the three authors, Attoji Dikshita who composed the text of Vayakarana Maton Majjana Karika, Kaundabhatta who composed the text of Vayakarana Bhushana and Nagesha Bhatta who composed the text of Vayakarana Siddhanta Banjusha and Sphotavada and so on. These are the three main authors whose contribution is taken into consideration while explaining the definitions of Karaka which were studied in the previous lecture. The main point of view can be summed up as that of the Shabda Bodha, the verbal cognition point of view. So let us study all these definitions one by one from this point of view. We need to understand the nature of Kriya as explained by these scholars, these theoreticians. So nature of Kriya is the following, Kriya is denoted by the verbal root. So to use the technical terminology, we can say that Kriya is Vachya and verbal root or Dhatu is Vachaka. So there is this relationship of Vachya Vachaka Bhava between the Kriya and Dhatu. Kriya has two parts of its nature, of its nature, Phala and Vyapara. Vyapara is the process involved in an action and phala is the result of that process. It is the vyapara which generates the phala. There is a janya janaka bhava relation between them. Phala gets generated by the vyapara or the process and vyapara generates the phala. Here are some examples. If we take the verbal root gama which means to go, the vyapara and the phala with reference to the action of going can be presented in the following manner. Sanyoga Janaka Pada Prakshepadib Vyapara. The process beginning with taking steps by foot which generates the association. This is what is the meaning of Gama. Sanyoga is the Phala, Pada Prakshepa is the Vyapara. Sanyoga is generated by Pada Prakshepa, Pada Prakshepa generates Sanyoga. Similarly, if we look at the verbal root tyaja, which means to leave, its meaning can be rendered in this particular terminology as Vibhaga Janaka Pada Prakshapadi Vyapara. The process beginning with taking steps by foot, which generates the separation. This is what is the meaning of tyaja. Vibhaga is the phala and pada prakshepadi is the vyapara as far as a human being is concerned. Then we look at the verbal root pacha which means to cook. 
सो विकलुक्ति जनक अधिश्रयणादि अवश्रयण पर्यंत व्यापार दिस इज वॉट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ पच द प्रोसेस बिगिनिंग विद द प्लेसिंग ऑफ द वेसल ऑन फायर एंड एंडिंग इन रिमूविंग द वेसल फ्रॉम द फायर दिस इज द प्रोसेस एंड दिस प्रोसेस जनरेट्स द सॉफनिंग ऑफ ग्रेन्स दिस इज वॉट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ एक्शन ऑफ कुकिंग डिनोटेड बाय द वर्बल रूट पच सो विकलुक्ति इज द फल एंड अधिश्रयणादि अवश्रयणम दिस इज ऑल दैट इज कॉल्ड व्यापार this is how the meaning the nature of kriya can be explained so to put it diagrammatically dhatu denotes kriya kriya has two inherent aspects vyapara and phal so if we take the example of gama gamana going is the meaning and pada prakshepadi is the vyapara and sanyoga is the phala so now let us try to define all the karakas that we studied in the previous lecture in this particular way apadana was defined by 1424 as dhruvam apaye apadanam now it is defined as prakruta dhatu avachya vibhagashraya buddhi the cognition of the substratum of the separation which is not denoted by the relevant verbal root is termed as apadana i repeat the cognition of the substratum of the separation which is not denoted by the relevant verbal root is termed apadana buddhi is cognition substratum is ashraya of the separation is vibhaga which is not denoted avachya by the relevant verbal root is prakruta dhatu and this is what is called apadana so let us take the example of gama meaning to go which means sanyoga janaka pada prakshepadi vyapara which means the process beginning with taking steps by foot which generates the association but this sanyoga is generated only after the separation takes place but the separation is not the meaning of the verbal root this must be remembered so the separation here is not the meaning of the verbal root so it is prakruta dhatu avachya so there is vibhaga but this vibhaga is not the meaning avachya of the prakruta dhatu relevant dhatu that is used here gam so now the substratum of such a vibhaga is termed as apadana over here so if we look at the same example saha prayagat kashim gachhati he goes to kashi from prayag so the speaker here describes the action of going which is sanyoga janaka vyapara and this sanyoga is not possible without a vibhaga and this vibhaga is nothing but the apaya mentioned in the sutra 1424 dravam apaye apadanam this vibhaga is not denoted by a verbal root shown with dotted arrow in the diagram that we shall see in the next slide so the substratum of such a vibhaga is prayaga which is what is a dhruva in the sutra dravam apaye apadanam and therefore now following the definition of apadana prakruta dhatu avachya vibhagashraya this prayaga is termed an apadana so here is a diagrammatical representation here is a dhatu which denotes kriya and dhatu denotes kriya and kriya has got two components vyapara and phala now this kriya can have vibhaga but that is not the meaning of the dhatu and that is why this dotted arrow this arrow which is cut this arrow indicates that this is not the meaning now the ashraya of such a vibhaga is called apadana 
the concrete example given over here is the verbal root gama which means gamana this is a kriya this is a dhatu gamana kriya consists of sanyoga as its phala and pada prakshepadi as its vyapara now this sanyoga is not possible unless the vibhaga takes place but this vibhaga is not the meaning of gamana it is in variably present as far as the meanings of the gamana are concerned it is entailed in this meaning but it is not directly denoted by the verbal root gama now such a vibhaga and its ashraya now in this case it is prayaga this is what is termed as apadana in this case this is how the term apadana gets explained from the point of view of shabda bodha and that is also shown to have correlation with the wordings in the sutras in the ashtadhyayi defining apadana let us now study the definition of sampradana given in these texts and also the modern tradition prakruta dhatu vacha phala uddeshya buddhi is what is sampradana the cognition of the recipient of the result of the action denoted by the relevant verbal root is termed sampradana and i repeat the cognition of the recipient of the result of the action denoted by the relevant verbal root is termed sampradana the cognition that is a buddhi of the recipient uddeshya of the result phala of the action that is denoted by the relevant verbal root prakruta dhatu vachya this is what is termed as sampradana so an element thought to be the purpose of generating the result of the action denoted by the verbal root is termed sampradana this is what is karmana yam abhipraiti let us take an example the same example sa krishi palaya gam dadati she gives a cow to a farmer that's the meaning of this sentence here the speaker describes the action of giving cow is the object she is the agent it is thought that through this object namely the cow the agent that is she wants to reach krishi wala the farmer so krishi wala the farmer is the uddeshya recipient of the object of this action and hence krishi wala the farmer is termed a sampradana this is how the definition of sampradana as given in this scheme also matches with the definition given in the sutra of ashtadhyayi so here is a diagrammatical representation here is a dhatu which denotes kriya and vyapara and phala are its parts the ashraya of phala is called karma and this karma is related to an entity which has the relation of uddeshya this is called sampradana so if you take the instance of pacha the action denoted by the verbal root pacha is cooking pachana in this case it has got a vyapara and vikluti is the result of this action odana is the substratum of this vikluti and the uddeshya of this odana is yajna datta so yajna datta is termed sampradana in this case let us now look at the next karaka and its definition provided in this particular scheme karana karana is defined as svanishtha vyapara avyavadhanena phala nishpadakatva buddhi the cognition of the element which generates the result of the process immediately after it gets operationalized is termed karana i repeat the cognition of the element which generates the result of the process immediately after it gets operationalized is termed karana the cognition buddhi of the element which generates nishpadakatva the result phala of the process immediately avyavadhanena after it gets operationalized 
स्वनिष्ठ व्यापार दिस इज टर्म एज करण सो एन एलिमेंट विच इज थॉट एज बींग ऑपरेशनल एंड इमिडिएटली प्रोड्यूसिंग द रिजल्ट ऑफ द एक्शन इज टर्म एज करण दिस इज वॉट इज साधक तमत्व लेटस लुक एट द एग्जाम्पल बालको लेखन्या गृहपाठम लिखती दिस इज द सेम एग्जाम्पल अ बॉय राइट्स द होमवर्क बाय अ पेन ही आर द स्पीकर डिस्क्राइब्स द एक्शन ऑफ राइटिंग अ बॉय इज द एजेंट एंड द होमवर्क द ऑब्जेक्ट नाउ द पेन स्व इज थॉट टू बी सच दैट वेन ऑपरेशनलाइज निष्ठ व्यापार द रिजल्ट ऑफ द एक्शन ऑफ राइटिंग इज प्रोड्यूस्ड अव्यवधान फल निष्पादकत्व हैपन्स एंड देर फॉर पेन लेखनी इज टर्म अ करण बिकॉज वेन इट गेट्स ऑपरेशनलाइज द होमवर्क विच इज द रिजल्ट ऑफ द प्रोसेस ऑफ राइटिंग दैट कम्स इन टू बींग इफ द पेन डज नॉट गेट ऑपरेशनलाइज इट डज नॉट ब्रिंग अबाउट द रिजल्ट ऑफ द एक्शन ऑफ राइटिंग नेमली दिस होमवर्क दैट इज द रीजन वाय लेखनी और द पेन इज टर्म एज करण दिस इज वॉट इज साधक तमत्व दिस इज वॉट करण दिस इज हाउ करण गेट्स डिफाइंड एंड दिस इज हाउ साधक तमत्व गेट्स लिंक टू दू दिस डेफिनेशन डायग्रमैटिकली वी कैन शो इट इन दिस वे नाउ लेट एस गो टू अधिकरण अधिकरण इज डिफाइंड एज कर्तृ कर्म द्वारक फल व्यापार आधारत्व बुद्धि सो द कॉग्निशन ऑफ द सबस्टेटम ऑफ द प्रोसेस एज वेल एज रिजल्ट ऑफ द एक्शन थ्रू द एजेंट एंड द ऑब्जेक्ट इज अधिकरण द कॉग्निशन ऑफ द सबस्टेटम ऑफ द प्रोसेस एज वेल एज रिजल्ट ऑफ द एक्शन थ्रू द एजेंट एंड द ऑब्जेक्ट इज वॉट इज अधिकरण द कॉग्निशन बुद्धि ऑफ द सबस्टेटम आधारत्व ऑफ द प्रोसेस व्यापार एज वेल एज रिजल्ट फल ऑफ द एक्शन थ्रू द्वारक द एजेंट कर्तृ एंड द ऑब्जेक्ट कर्म एंड एन एलिमेंट थॉट टू बी द सबस्टेटम ऑफ द कर्तृ और द कर्म एंड थ्रू देम थॉट टू बी द सबस्टेटम ऑफ द प्रोसेस and the result respectively is called adhikarana so adhikarana is indirectly related to the process and the result let us take the example balika kate aste balika kate aste a girl sits on the mat the speaker here wants to describe the action of sitting a girl being the agent the mat is thought to be the substratum or adhar of this girl who is playing the role of karta and that is happening through this girl of the action of sitting so the mat which is the substratum of the karta and karta is the substratum of vyapara so the mat is linked to the action of sitting through the karta that is this girl and hence mat is termed adhikarana also termed as kartradhikarana the adhikarana of the karta similarly in the second example devadatta sthalya modanam pachati devadatta cooks the rice in a vessel it is the speaker the speaker describes the action of cooking devadatta is thought to be the agent odana is thought to be the object sthali is thought to be the substratum or adhar of this odana which is karma and through this odana sthali is the substratum of the result of the action and hence sthali is termed an adhikarana precisely karma adhikarana so we, this can be shown diagrammatically in this particular fashion a dhatu denotes a kriya and kriya has these two parts vyapara and phal vyaparashraya is called karta phalashraya is called karma and now 
the ashraya of this karta is called adhikarana kartra adhikarana and the ashraya of this karma is called karma adhikarana so in a way adhikarana is defined as dhatu vacha vyapara ashraya ashraya so ashraya of the ashraya of vyapara denoted by the verbal root is the kartra adhikarana and the ashraya of the ashraya of phala denoted by the verbal root is called karma adhikarana let us now study the definition of karma as given in this particular scheme prakruta dhatvartha vyapara janya prakruta dhatvartha prakruta dhatvartha vyapara janya prakruta dhatvartha phalashrayatva buddhi this is what is karma the cognition of the substratum of the result of the action denoted by the relevant verbal root which is generated by the process denoted by the relevant verbal root is termed karma i repeat the cognition of the substratum of the result of the action denoted by the relevant verbal root which is generated by the process denoted by the relevant verbal root is termed karma the cognition buddhi of the substratum of the result of the action phalashrayatva denoted by the relevant verbal root dhatvartha prakruta dhatvartha which is generated janya by the process vyapara denoted by the relevant verbal root prakruta dhatvartha is termed karma this is what is thought of as being most desired by the agent through the process in other words ipsita tamatva as described in 1449 kartu ipsita tamam karma let us look at the example palika pathashalam gachanti the female students go to school here the speaker describes the action of going through the verb gachanti balika being thought of as the agent the substratum of sanyoga which is the result of the process of going as denoted by the same verbal root is thought to be the pathashala and hence pathashala is the phalashraya which is generated by the process and hence it is ipsitatama and hence it is termed as karma following this particular definition so let us look at this from this diagram here we have a dhatu denoting kriya or verbal action this verbal action is made up of these two inherent components vyapara and phala vyapara ashraya is karta and phala ashraya is termed as karma by this definition so the definition of karma is dhatvartha phala ashraya to be to put it simply but we also say that dhatvartha vyapara janya so the vyapara the process which is the meaning of dhatu which generates the phala the substratum of such a phala is karma dhatvartha vyapara janya dhatvartha phala ashraya is karma to take an example pach is the verbal root pachana is the kriya patragni sanyoga etc this seems to be the vyapara and viklutti seems to be the phala now the ashraya of this phala viklutti which is odana is termed as karma and lastly karta as the karaka defined in 1454 as prakruta dhatu vachya vyapara ashraya buddhi prakruta dhatu vachya vyapara ashraya buddhi the cognition of the substratum of the process denoted by the relevant verbal root 
is termed karta. The cognition of the substratum of the process denoted by the verbal root is termed karta. The cognition buddhi of the substratum ashraya of the process vyapara denoted vacha by the relevant verbal root prakrta dhatu is termed as karta. An element in which is located the most important part of the action denoted by the verbal root namely the process is thought to be the karta. This is what is the independence or svatantratva which is mentioned in 1454 in the definition of karta namely svatantra karta. Let us take the example Devadattaha sthalya modanam yadnya dattaya pachati. Devadatta cooks the rice in a vessel for yadnya datta. In this case, odana that is rice is thought to be the object, sthali is thought to be the substratum of odana, yadnya datta is thought to be the recipient of this karma. Now, it is this Devadatta who is thought to be the one who brings all these above together to accomplish the action of cooking. So, Devadatta is thought to be the substratum of the process of cooking. In other words, Svatantra or independent and hence Devadatta is termed as Karta. To show this diagrammatically, we can say that the verbal root which denotes an action has got two components, Vyapara and Phala. The Vyapara Ashraya is Karta. In order to show karta, you do not need to show any other karaka. But that is not the case with other karakas. In order to show karma, you have to show karta. In order to show karana, you have to show karma, etc. This is what also shows the independence of karta. This is what also shows the svatantratva of karta. Svatantratva that makes a karta. So let us take the example of gama the verbal root, the verbal root gama, which means the action of going, gamana. It has got the vyapara namely pada prakshepa etc. and sanyoga being the result. Now the ashraya of this pada prakshepa is devadatta. If this pada prakshepa does not happen, sanyoga cannot come into existence. So now devadatta is the substratum of this pada prakshepa Therefore, by definition, prakruta dhatu gama vachya gamana vyapara pada prakshepadi ashraya and so devadatta is the karta. And this brings about the entire action, accomplishment of the action. So devadatta is defined as karta in this particular case following the definition provided and studied earlier prakrita dhatu vacha vyaparash rayaha karta. So to represent all the karakas in a diagram, this will be that diagram. We have a prakrita dhatu, we have a kriya as its meaning, vyapara and phala as its inherent components. It is the phala which is produced by this karana. It is the sampradana which is the uddesha of this karma. It is the adhikarana which is the ashraya of karma. It is another adhikarana which is the ashraya of karta. It is karta which is the ashraya of vyapara. It is karma which is the ashraya of phala. And it is the vibhaga which is not denoted by the verbal root. The ashraya of such a vibhaga is apadana. This is how all the karakas can be defined using this particular scheme. In this discussion, we demonstrated and explained these definitions and also explained them diagrammatically and also showed the link of this explanation with the wordings in the sutra given by Ashtadhyayi in the section defining the term karaka. We shall now study the link of these karakas with the actual words known as vibhakti in the 
next lecture. Thank you for your attention.